Mistress of All Evil, A Tale of the Dark Fairy by Serena Valentino Copyright 2009, Disney Enterprises Incorporated, published by Disney Press Chapter 14, Convergence Owls, crows, pigeons, and dragonflies were arriving at Morningstar Castle in siege numbers. Messages from every kingdom and every corner of the magical realms were all flooding in. Many were inquiring about the great magnitude of power that had erupted from Ursula's death and whether it had been taken care of. Some of the messages were simply offers of condolences for Ursula's passing. Nanny had time for none of those. She would reply when she had dealt with Maleficent. But one message would not wait. It was from her sister, informing her that a group of fairies was on its way to help her handle the odd sister's situation. That was the last thing Nanny needed. A bunch of fairies descending upon Morningstar while Maleficent was there? Why in Hades does the world choose to fall apart all at once? Leave it to my sister and her silly, wish-grunting fairies to meddle in things that do not concern them. Nanny wondered if it was all a ruse to confront Maleficent. She found it difficult to believe that Fairy Godmother cared about the Odd Sisters. No, she was just being paranoid. How would the fairies even know that Maleficent was on her way to Morningstar? The fairies were coming to discuss the Odd Sisters. Miss High and Mighty Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo was coming to cast judgment on the Odd Sisters. Simple, straightforward, nothing to worry about. Nanny's gut instinct nagged at her. No, this convergence will be disastrous. She was sure of it. Nanny felt overwhelmed, not only by everything that was happening, but also by the rapid-fire recollections that continued to flash through her mind. It was strange. Her memories were flooding back. But Nanny couldn't remember how she'd lost them in the first place. You probably put a spell on yourself to forget. Seems like something you would do, Cersei said, from the doorway, interrupting Nanny's thoughts. Cersei was probably right. It was highly likely that Nanny had caused herself to lose her own memories, as a way to deal with the pain of her failure to protect Maleficent. It was horrible enough to remember all her own regrets, but to remember Maleficent's memories in such vivid detail was breaking her heart. It was no wonder she'd chosen to forget. Nanny switched the subject, trying to avoid the memories just for a moment. How are your sisters? Any change? Cersei shook her head. No. Nanny looked sad, lost in her thoughts. She didn't say so, but Cersei could tell she was also dreadfully concerned about the Odd Sisters. She was worried about Maleficent. I don't want you to worry, Cersei said finally. I know we'll find something to wake my sisters. And as for Maleficent, you have Blondes. You have Tulip. And of course you have me. We're here. There's nothing Maleficent can do to you with us beside you. I'm more worried about my sister and her goody-goody friends, honestly, Nanny said handing Cersei the fairy godmother's message. They're also on their way. Cersei narrowed her eyes. That is a problem. Is there no way to turn them away, to tell them that they're not wanted? Nanny shook her head. My sister never imagines a situation in which she isn't welcome. Telling her she wasn't wanted wouldn't even register. Turning her away isn't an option. She'd simply look at me blankly and pretend not to understand what I'm saying. Cersei sighed. Why is she coming? You don't think she's the one who put my sisters to sleep, do you? I honestly don't know. I assumed they were sleeping because it took so much of their strength to fight the spell they created to help Ursula, Nanny explained. But they still won't wake. Nothing I've tried has helped. Nothing you've done has worked. And now I'm wondering if the fairies have somehow intervened. Cersei's eyes flashed with anger. Intervened how? If they've hurt them... No, their magic doesn't allow them to hurt anyone, not even their enemies, Nanny said. And your sisters have never been their enemies, not really. Yes, they've sided with Maleficent in the past. The Odd Sisters have helped her before, but they never hounded the fairies. It seems my sister's been stepping out of her providence lately. She's taking her role of fairy godmother too far. Princess Aurora is not her charge. But if she's taken it upon herself to cast an endless sleep on your sisters, I'd wager it's for the protection of her beloved princesses. Cersei frowned. I thought Cinderella was her only princess. She is, and is living happily, but I suspect my sister may be growing weary with not much to do. 
so she's putting her round little nose in where it doesn't belong, Nanny sighed. Enough about my sister. I just hope she doesn't bring those insufferable little sycophants, the three good fairies, with her. You have no love for fairies, do you, Nanny? Cersei asked with a smile. I don't blame you. If it's any consolation, I don't see you as a fairy. In my heart, you're a witch and always have been. Thank you, my dear. Your sisters once said something quite similar to both me and Maleficent. Something about being born a fairy, but having a witch's heart. I suppose they were right. Cersei considered that. Well, if you think about it, a fairy can just as easily be a witch as a human might, if she's capable of the right sort of magic. But with you, there's a little more to it. I think it's what I see in your heart. You don't share a fairy sensibilities. Too right, and I thank you, my dear, but... Nanny was interrupted by a loud knock on the front door of the castle that made them both jump. Nanny's heart sank. She wasn't ready to face Maleficent just yet. Cersei took Nanny's hand and squeezed it, reminding Nanny she was there to protect her. How Nanny wished she had always had Cersei in her life. What would it have been like to always have had such a young, powerful witch willing to do good by her side? A witch who had an open heart and none of the bigotry that ran so deep in the fairy community. Nanny had been preparing herself for Maleficent's rage, but she wasn't quite ready to meet it. She wasn't ready for the condemnation. Maybe when Maleficent saw Cersei, she would see into her heart and see Nanny through Cersei's eyes. Maybe she would hold less judgment in her own heart for Nanny by virtue of the love Cersei held for her, an old woman who only now had remembered who she really was. Hudson came into the room with a grave look on his face. He was pale and seemed very uncomfortable. What is it, Hudson? What's the matter? Who is here? Nanny asked. It's Queen Snow White, ma'am. She sent a message. For the love of all things good, what could Snow possibly want with us? Nanny wondered. Hudson shifted his weight back and forth awkwardly. In the page, ma'am, she says the message is from Queen Snow White and her mother. It wasn't like Hudson to ask questions, especially about royalty, but he couldn't stop himself. Ma'am, has Queen Snow White lost her senses? Everyone knows the legend of the old queen's demise. Please, excuse my impertinence, but... My dear Hudson, please don't concern yourself with this, I assure you. Queen Snow White hasn't lost her senses, Nanny said firmly. Yes, ma'am, Hudson said nervously. He didn't look at all comfortable with the knowledge that the infamous Queen Grimhilda somehow still inhabited this world. The old queen's disposition has changed since her death, Hudson. Please don't worry, Nanny said. Hudson gave Nanny a look she had grown accustomed to, a look of pure awe, because she had read his thoughts. I'll take that message now, Hudson. If you don't mind, Nanny said with a coy smile. Hudson fumbled for the message and placed it in Nanny's outstretched hand. Of course, I, I, I'm i sorry, he stammered. Please, Hudson, don't worry. Why don't you go downstairs for a nice cup of tea? I think it'll do you some good. Poor Hudson, Cersei said with a laugh as the witches watched him walk away. What does the letter say? Let me see, Nanny said. Cersei looked on, analyzing the expression on Nanny's face rather than reading her thoughts. Clearly the queen's weren't sending good news. It seems your sisters left a book at the old queen's castle during one of her visits when Snow was still a small girl, Nanny explained. A book of fairy tales. Apparently the old queen used to read this book to Snow when she was little, and there was a story about a dragon witch who puts a young woman to sleep for her own protection. They're wondering now, with everything going on, with Aurora and Maleficent, if this book foretold their story. Cersei didn't know what to make of that, but Nanny continued before she could question it. The part that is most concerning to them is that the book seems to be predicting everyone's stories, not just Aurora's, but Snow's, Ariel's, Tulip's, Cinderella's, even yours. The old queen and Snow White are worried the book is spellbound. Cersei didn't even want to think about what it would mean if her sisters had spellbound the book. Do you think it is? Spellbound? No. I think I know this book. I think it's simply recording time. It's not prophecy or spell work. 
I don't think even your sisters would do such a thing. Cersei wasn't as sure. If my sisters did spellbind that book, you know Queen Grimhilda will want revenge. Everyone will. Nanny shuddered at the notion. If the Out Sisters had spellbound the book, not even Cersei would be able to protect them from the repercussions of their grievous misdeeds. We need to see this book, Cersei. Can you write to Snow White and ask her to send it? The only way to know if the book is spellbound is if you look at it. If your sisters have done this, Cersei cut her off, it would be devastating. Nanny felt a terrible chill as she thought about the destruction the Odd Sisters had caused over the years. She felt a tugging in her heart that she hadn't felt longer than she'd like to recollect. She wondered if she should even bring the Odd Sisters back. She'd promised to help Cersei wake them, simply because that was what Cersei wished. And Nanny wanted nothing more than to make Cersei happy. But would that really be the best thing for Cersei? Would Cersei ever truly be happy with her sisters in the world? inflicting death and destruction on everything they touched. Cersei would spend the rest of her long life righting her sister's wrongs, helping those her sisters had hurt. Would she ever reach her full potential in their shadows? Nanny's heartbroken in the wake of the revelation. I can't refuse to help her now. I can't go back on my word, even if it would be the best thing for Cersei if her sisters stayed asleep. Cersei's face filled with grief. She'd heard Nanny's thoughts and felt betrayed by them. How could you? Cersei cried as all the color drained from Nanny's face. Nanny hadn't meant for Cersei to hear what she was thinking. I want only to protect you, Cersei. I promise you, she insisted. Cersei stood silently, not knowing what to say. She felt numb and close to tears. She couldn't look Nanny in the eye. I think I will go home. Write to Snow White and ask her more about this book, Cersei said. Besides, I think I could use a change of scenery. Thank you so much for listening. Remember, like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that notification bell to keep up to date on all the new magic. Have a magical day.